So uh, I did have a couple of cool things that I wanted to talk about and show you guys before we dive into some of the questions. Uh, first of all, I know you know Corona is, is getting pretty bad out there, so we hope everybody is safe and sound. And like everybody's saying, I think the best thing we can all do is is just stay indoors. You know, don't venture out into the world if you absolutely do not have to. And one thing I would suggest too for a lot of folks is. You know, if this is the first time you've encountered a real like work from home situation or being cooped up in your home for a long period of time, um, treat the work hours of the day as if it was still regular work. And I know this can be like, it sounds so simple, like, oh man, he's, that doesn't even mean anything. But, you know, doing things as simple as, you know, if you would go to work and you would groom yourself before work, keep doing those things. You know, you can see fresh cut. I'm not going anywhere, but fresh cut, you know, shaved, groom, wear, work clothes, don't just sit in your pajamas all day, um, you know, schedule your meals like you would in your lunch and do all that stuff. Because having that kind of schedule and rigidity in your schedule really helps make things feel a little bit more normal, a little less crazy and kind of chaotic in their kind of loosey goosey kind of way. And I tell you that from experience because I've worked at home for a very, very long time, or at least, you know, in my office home and all these kind of things. So, you know, if you fall into that trap of getting too relaxed about the situation and you kind of just roll out of bed and you're in pajama, no pants, and you're, you're getting to work, you know, it'll always feel weird and not great. Um, you know, and, and Mikkel saying, always waking up early, showering, put on clothes. You know, it, it's the same thing. It really does help keep you in that mindset of, you know, doing some productive stuff during the day, and then you can kind of wind down in the evening. Uh, Jerry's also saying, get stuff, get dressed up for fancy dinner with housemate. That's a that's a great idea. You know, do stuff even if you're in your home. Um, just because we're locked in doesn't mean we don't have to have some kind of normal life. So, something I thought would be actually very interesting, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my camera quality is looking mighty crisper than usual, and no one said anything. So, but I, I will take the nice haircut compliment. Um, and I found actually a really interesting setup that might be practical and useful for a lot of folks now that we are at home and, you know, a lot of you might be working remotely and a lot of you might even be considering making online content, which I highly recommend, you know, however you can be productive, however you can keep um, sharing work, getting your name out there, even during this tough time is really valuable for you in the long term. And, you know, previously, like a lot of folks, I've been using the good old Logitech C920. And I'm not going to sit here and, you know, disrespect the C920. That is a workhorse camera. I've thrown that out of windows and it still works the day after. But, you know, the, the automatic adjusting of focus, the automatic exposure was never really great, didn't really have good low light performance. And it was always kind of reflective and, and kind of fuzzy in our videos. You know, recently I'd even switched over to my laptop camera but that was only 720p. And then it really dawned on me, why am I not taking advantage of my amazing smartphone camera? Now, this might sound like an obvious realization, but when you really start to think about it, you know, the pictures we take on our phones, they're gorgeous. Uh, basically, if you have a phone made in the last three or four years, the camera's probably amazing on it. And there are some workflows now that allow you to kind of just take that native stream and bring it into your computer and use it for whatever you want. So actually, unfortunately, I don't have a second camera to show you my setup, but I'm going to describe all of it and kind of show you the bits and pieces that I can because what I have set up is, so this right here that I'm pointing at is my iPhone, I think, 11. And I know it's bad that I don't know. It's one of the newer ones. Um, nice thing is, obviously, camera quality is great. Low light performance is great. All these things are great. But how do we actually turn that into a webcam? Because obviously you can like record it and do all this stuff and it doesn't really help. So first thing is I can give you a quick little tour of the hardware that I had to just pick up. Not expensive, so very easily doable and even can make shift it yourself at home. Uh, so the first thing is here, let me share my screen. First things first, some way to mount this phone to something. And in my case, uh, just because I'm on the road a lot, I didn't want to bring too much extra clunky gear. You know, if I can avoid a tripod, even better. 
I found, uh, actually, I'm using this exact one. I can't even pronounce this name, X XCV, side mount clip. And essentially what it is is a little one of those clips I'm sure you've seen where exactly like this, you can clip it on one side is your laptop screen, on this side is your device. Uh, you can do your phone, your tablet, all that kind of good stuff. In this case, I've actually taken that and put that on top of my monitor, not on the side, like a traditional kind of webcam might be placed. And this actually works well. And I will tell you, even it works with an OtterBox on my iPhone because I am a clumsy human being. So that's that's where my camera's sitting. iPhone in the little slot, slot on the monitor. Now you've got two options for how you then get that signal into your computer. One option that I found to be really great is NDI, and we all know and love NDI. I'm not using NDI, but I'll, I'll come back to what I am actually using. But NDI is really easy because there are so many different applications I found uh, on you know the iOS app store, and I bet if you look on the Google Play store, you'll find a ton of NDI camera apps for mobile. You install them you give your NDI stream a kind of name, and then you can basically go on any app on your system and right over that Wi-Fi get that camera. Now, I shied away from that just because I do travel a lot and a lot of the places I am in may not have the strongest Wi-Fi networks. You know, I didn't kind of really want to deal with the lag that might be associated with it. And one of the options I found, at least for iOS, was an app called Camera for OBS Studio or OBS Camera for iOS. Um, if you go to obs.camera, you'll be on their website. One of the really interesting things about this is not only is it clean and easy to use, uh, also supports USB direct feed of the video. So right now what I have is, you know, the iPhone clip, the cable goes around the laptop into the side port here. Now, what's very cool about this is they also have their own OBS plugin. And what you do is you basically install that OBS plugin. They have really simple instructions that you follow on the website. I don't want to double click on it because I don't want the stream, the camera stream to go down if I start messing around with it. But I assure you it's very easy. Uh, they have lots of documentation on their website somewhere, help and docs, I imagine. You know, and you can, you can see here, you can choose between getting the feed over USB or using NDI. Now, I'm sure there's something like this similar for Android, if that's kind of what you're using. But for I found this only option that really work bandwidth than required. So, you know, wasn't using NDI, wasn't using RTSP, as somebody else mentioned. Uh, this seemed to be the best option. So now you can see I have this inside of OBS. And by the way, I am learning to really love OBS Studio. And if you are not a fan of OBS Studio, I highly recommend downloading it. It's free. Check it out. It is very powerful. You know, in a lot of the cases where maybe you don't need some of the power of Touch Designer or the flexibility, or even as a tool that works with Touch Designer, if you guys are looking to start setting up maybe some live streaming setups, uh, if you've got some downtime and want to kind of produce some content online live, really easy to grab the output of Touch Designer you know, send it over NDI or even Spout, I imagine, or Siphon. I bet there's plugins for both of these because yes, we won't have so at least the next part of this operation, which is a plugin called OBS Virtual Cam. Now what this does is if you're familiar with the NDI tools, we have one called Virtual Input, which basically captures an NDI stream coming into the machine and presents it back to all the apps on the computer as if it was a native webcam. Now, this can be a little bit harder on Mac OS just because I believe they have this, um, you know, the core video framework a little bit more locked down than they do on Windows and Linux where you can kind of make anything look like anything. But on Windows, this is very easy. I installed this little plugin, set it up inside of the tools area here, virtual cam. And then the great thing about that is if I open up my Zoom, well, I guess I'm screen sharing, but um, you know, in Zoom, in Touch Designer, in any of these apps, my iPhone now looks exactly like a generic webcam, generic video device in top inside of Touch Designer. Inside of Zoom, it even just pops up in the menu right next to my laptop webcam. And I'm really enjoying it because also, you know, I got the little touchscreen interface here on the iPhone, so I can do things like flip the camera 
very quickly and easily, and you can see the lovely view I have out the window. Flip it back, now we're back to me. You could do a crazy zoom in. And go back to normal, as well as tune all kinds of other settings like the bit rate that it's using, um, any of the other settings, like if I want to use USB or NDI. Really easy to use system, doesn't take that much bandwidth. I mean, right now it's reading at 1.2 megabytes a second. So even if you're on maybe an older system um, where maybe you don't have USB 3, should be more than powerful enough to use that system. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.